In this tutorial, I'll show you how to render out fire. In my last tutorial, I showed you how to make this. However, feedback I got is when you went into render view mode, like I'll do right now, you couldn't see the fire. So I'll create a tutorial now and take you every step of the way. Also teaching you some basic settings when it comes to fire. First thing we want to do is create a new scene. You can use the default cube or you can decide to use a different option if you prefer. Let me just make sure my keystrokes are showing. In this case, I'm going to use a different object. I'm going to press Shift A, Mesh, and I am going to use Circle. And when I press Tab, I get this pie menu here. And I'm going to go to Edit Mode, press F to Full, press Tab again, go back to Object Mode. If you want the same pie menu, you go to Edit, Preferences, and on the Key Map, you make sure Tab for Pie Menu. It's very useful when you're doing animations and it, um, yeah, I just prefer it. Right, so now that we've got this over here, we're going to rename the circle uh, Fire, I guess. Press Enter, press Numpad 1, click on Object and click on Quick Effects and click Quick Smoke. And just like that, we have a smoke simulation. Now, we're currently in the Domain section and we have to go to the Physics Properties and you could up the resolution for a much better result, but it takes a lot of time. We're going to leave it on 32 and try and get the best result possible on such a low resolution. Uh, normally about 150 will give you a really, really good result. But 32 is fine for this example. Next thing you want to do is turn on adaptive domain. Currently your domain is fixed to this size. Adaptive domain says this is the max size you can have your domain, but it will adapt based on how much space is required. So when we turn on adaptive domain over here, you can see it's shrunk, but as it will grow as and when required basically. So I'm quite happy with that. And we can also up the resolution here, which I'm going to just up to two. There we go. Next thing you probably want to turn on is dissolve. What dissolve does currently your emission will just fill up the entire domain eventually with fire and smoke, which is no good because it's not dissolving. Whereas you can now set the fire and smoke to dissolve and disappear from the scene within five seconds. It gives a much more natural effect on five seconds. It looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with the default settings there. Next thing you want to do is clear up any mess that you might have. And this is not necessarily the best way to go about it, but it's one of the ways you want to do, and that's to turn on noise. And what noise does, it basically gets rid of all the noise, the pixelated noise that, that might appear in your scene. And we're just going to up that to three. The next thing is look at fire. And you can determine the height of your flames from this emission by changing the reaction speed of your domain. So the higher this number is, the higher the flame goes. The lower this number is, the lower the flame grows. I'm going to go for 6.5. 0.65, which I'm quite happy with. And we're going to make this animation under catch uh, for this example only 100 frames, which is probably too much on the crappy computer I have. We're going to make it resumable because that's good practice, and we're going to change this to modular. And I'm quite happy with everything here. You, you, you can't animate the offset of a fire in your domain, but we can animate this on our flow. Our current object that's our flow is our fire. If we click on fire and we go to our physics properties, you'll see it shows flow, smoke, change that to fire or fire and smoke. Make sure it's on inflow, especially because it's a, um, what you call it, just a surface. It's not a whole gigantic 3D object. Um, you can up the sampling steps for better quality, but I'm going to leave it as is. And you can increase the, uh, the flame rate uh, by increasing the fuel. And uh, we will play with this. We will press, hover over this with your mouse, press I, and go to frame one. Well, let's go to frame 50. Change this to, just for fun, we're going to make it 5, press I, and then change this to 100, where the animation ends. And we can possibly make this one and press I. And then we can also change the length of our timeline to 100. 
There's no need for it to be any longer. And another thing we can quickly do, put the mouse over here, pull out another um, display area and change this to the graph editor. Currently, this is the graph editor of the fuel thing we've created, the um, flame rate. And if you press F, when select this to make sure it's selected. Oh, I deselected it. There we go. Press. Okay, it doesn't work for this, but I mean, you, you could play around with this and change the intensity to make it happen a little bit faster. If, if you like, maybe make it something like that just for an interesting effect of the flame size. It's something you can play around with. Anyways, I'm done with that for now. And I'm going to click here and do that. Right, the next thing you want to do is make sure you've got texture selected. Open this up and we need to add a texture map. Your texture maps are in your texture properties. We're going to add a new one and we're going to use in this example the clouds texture. We're going to go to colors and we're going to increase the contrast to three or four. And we're also going to change the size to 0 0.1. As you can see, the increasing the contrast makes the dark spots and light spots more apparent. All the dark spots are where flames will not be emitted from. All the white spots are where flames will be emitted from. And obviously changing the size means it almost improves, the, it makes it look like there's more resolution. It's a, it, looks a bit, it looks a bit better in my view. And once you're happy with that, we can go back to the physics properties. I'm quite happy with this result. I'm going to go to physics properties. And we currently got a fire inflow, use flow, fuel, that's all set, flow source. We can, we can probably, the, the surface emission is the thickness of the initial emission of the fire. Uh, we can probably make this one. If it was, for example, five, there would be a default flame of this height. But if you make it like one or 0 0.5, it'll be almost as thin as this line here which is a good starting point. It looks a bit more natural to have this a little bit less. Um, and everything else is fine there. Initial velocity we can leave as is. And we've got our texture map set up. And we're just going to leave things as is. We're just going to select that texture and boom. Leave it as is, which I'm quite happy with. The only thing you want to change here is the offset. So currently when the flames are being emitted, it will be very, it will look almost a little bit too static. It will still look good because it's a physics property, but it will look a bit static. For a slightly more realistic effect, we want to change the offset in this animation. So we're going to hover over this with the mouse, press I. Well, let's maybe make this 0 0.8, press I, and then go back to frame 1 and make this 0 press I and then we can once again open this up go to the graph editor and now we're making sure we've got the, the green line selected which is the offset settings and you can press T this time and you can make it a constraint like a bump like that or you can press F sorry T and make it a line which will be a much more gradual, better result in my view. But this, this flame is going to look crazy sick just based on what I see there. Right, so we're going to close that and we should be happy with what we see. And now we're going to go back to the domain quickly and just scroll all the way, well, scroll, scroll to the top here. You want to bake in the, set, the initial settings first if you're happy with everything at 32 resolutions. And once this is done, we're going to bake in the other part as well. This won't take too long, as you can see, so we might as well wait. I'll sip my coffee. Obviously, if you want a much more realistic result, you'd probably up the resolution, just giving you a heads up. I mean, that goes without saying. There's a lot of things we can do to improve the quality, but when you're working with a potato computer, ah, those things are a luxury. Right. Boom. There we go. Now we can scroll down here. Now that we've got this baked in, we can scroll down here and we can bake in the noise as well. So we're going to click bake noise. 
so that the file looks more realistic. It's taking a little bit longer. And I'm gonna just pause and unpause when this is done. All right, so now that it's baked in, we in solid view mode, you'll be able to see the flames over here. So if we press space bar, you can see our adaptive domain change size because that's how what we set it on. So it could basically um, bake and uh, a lot faster. And yeah, there we go. I'm gonna just pause this quickly. And just to let you know, because we never added any constraints here, the file will just disappear when it passes the, the domain, maximum domain height part. And uh, we could create a constraint by border collisions, but I feel it just wouldn't look right. And because this simulation of 100 frames 24 frames per second at frame two and a half or frame three, we make it shoot off, we'd probably only see the decrease um, that we, because of that graph we did if we extended this to frame 100 because of the uh, dissolving of five seconds. So just giving you a heads up, everything looks fine and does make sense. However, now that we see the flame over here, we're on uh, frame 89, and we go to render view mode, all of a sudden it disappears. So the question is, how do I render this flame out so that it's visible? Well, that's a great question. Thank you, bye. <laughs> I'm joking. Anyway, so let's quickly open this up, this timeline. And we're gonna change this timeline quickly. We're gonna go to our shader editor. Make sure you've got your domain selected like I have. That's the most important part your smoke domain and we're going to scroll down here in our shader editor and we're just going to tweak a couple of settings here so we can get a slightly better result um, right the first thing you that i recommend you do is change the black body intensity and make this one and just like that the flame appears that's the most important part other things i recommend tweaking is the uh, density possibly make it more dense so it's more together maybe even make this 15 and I would also perhaps change the temperature of the flames let's try it's a bit too light one thousand uh, no I like one two five oh there we go so you get the idea of what the temperature does. It, just, it increases the temperature, which increases the light, that changes the look and feel of the flame. But there you have it. Now we have a flame that we could render, but there's a few things we need to keep in mind. There are two different ways to go about this. We could render this out quickly uh, in, um, in EV or perfectly in cycles. I'll go over each step. One thing, if, you did, if this wasn't a tutorial, one thing you might want to do is increase the domain size so that you can see the full flame. It doesn't get cut off over here like, like we see, unfortunately. But this is still good enough for a tutorial. So let's quickly go to our renders properties. We're currently in EV. If you want to render this out in EV, I recommend turning on Bloom. It just makes it feel more realistic. Um, I always use ambient occlusion whenever I've got a light element, as well as screen space reflection. The next thing I'll do is press Shift A Mesh. Let's just create a mini scene here. S to scale this puppy out. And what I'm gonna do is create a new material. And it's going to be a glossy material and I'll just leave it like that. Other thing I'll do is I'll delete this. We don't actually need this light here. If there's any light that happens in the scene, it's gonna be from the fire. And next thing we wanna do is just choose an interesting angle for our flame. Uh, control alt numpad zero select your camera press G and just put it in the position that you like and click on that to get out of your camera select this press numpad one zoom in press G Z 
and just bring it to the bottom here where it makes sense, like that. So it looks like it's in the right place. The, the last thing you probably want to do is click on the world properties and you can click on background. I'm going to leave it on background. You can click on color and we can choose uh, environment textures. Um, you can choose to make it any background you want. I'm going to use an environment texture. You can go to HDR Haven um, is where I got mine. Downloads. And I'm just going to use a random back uh, HDR image. It's 100% free. Go online. Look, look at. I'm sure you'll be able to find HDR Haven. I think that's where I got these. Um, yep. So that's the scene. I'm quite happy with that. The only thing I'd want to do is decrease the strength of the scene so it doesn't overshadow the the fire. So I'm making that 0 0.2. So it's a bit darker. Maybe even less. 0 0.15. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. It feels like my time, it's dark, and we've got this. Now, just to make sure we're on the right page, I'm going to change from shader editor to the timeline. And I'm going to click on the camera just to see the angle. The last thing in EV uh, in the EV render settings I would turn on is under performance high quality normals. It will just lead to a slightly better looking result. And uh, I'm quite happy with that. And with all this done, the only other thing you want to do, obviously, if you haven't done this before, in output, uh, sorry, you might want to make this 16 zero compression, choose a folder at which you want this to, to render out from, and then just click on render animation, and there you have it. Uh, and just to demonstrate, we could render out, if we can render out a single image, we could render out the entire animation, and it will work. So we'll let this load and I'll just quickly show you. So we click render, view render. So it looks like that. Not particularly great because it's very low resolution, but pretty good for Eevee. But we could make this even better. If we go to the render settings, we change to cycles. Takes a lot longer to load. You want to turn on adaptive sampling, speed th speeds things up. And denoising is the key thing here. You want to make sure that denoising is turned on. And it will give a much more realistic flame. This is 32. But the resolution is so low on this image and it really looks so much better. Like it's it's unbelievable. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So, and the, obviously if you render this single image out, uh, let's click render image in cycles and I'll See you once this has rendered. And there you can see it's rendered out quite neat, uh, nice and neatly. And obviously you can animate this, render this out. Um, and you can see there's no real crazy amount of noise around this object. It's got a nice reflection at the bottom here. And it would look amazing rendered out um, as an animation as well. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. And uh, yeah. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and I hope you found value in this. And now I'm just playing how it looks out in Eevee. Keep in mind both for Cycles and Eevee I only had a resolution of 32. I mean it's crazy how good Cycles looks uh, with just 32 when you make the settings the way we've set it up in this tutorial. And yeah I'm just playing this out frame by frame just one time in Eevee so we can just see how the flame grows and how the adaptive domain works which in my view is pretty impressive.